let's take a look at how Latex Web is applied uh, in a development life cycle. So while projects are in development, uh, changes are taking place um, every day and you have continuous integration and so the build is taking place. Uh, and Latex Web can be integrated with, uh, can, be, can become part of your continuous integration system so that we can now look at as you change your code, is the architecture eroding? Are we introducing violations? Or are things getting better because we applied a refactoring initiative and we would actually like to be able to measure it and be able to quantify how much was that improvement. So what we are looking at uh, is, is this dashboard of projects. Uh, and there are two projects here right now that we are looking at. One's an ant demo project and the other is an, which happens to be a Java project and the other is an ISO AG lib project, uh, which is a C and C++ project. So let's go inside uh, the ant project. Um, so we're looking at the ant project um, and we're looking at snapshot version 1.9.6. Uh, in fact, we can choose any of the snapshots. There are multiple snapshots here and we could choose any of those snapshots. Uh, we can also download a snapshot if we want uh, and we can choose to see reports and we'll delve into it, uh, views, issues, and so on. So the first report that we are looking at is the system metrics delta, and you can see how the line, and we're doing a diff uh, with of version 1.96 with version 1.94, uh, and we can look and see how the line count has changed, how the number of classes have changed, the number of interfaces. So system level metrics is available at a top level. We can go further in and we can now look at how the architecture metrics have changed. So we can see how the complexity has increased, how the system cyclicality has changed or how intercomponent cyclicality has changed. And so some of the key metrics we are looking at and how they've changed. Uh, we can look at cycles, uh, so we can look at, see what are the current cycles in here. And these cycles are organized from bottom, uh, from top to bottom. So starting at the top level, we're walking through all the different cycles, and this one has a large number of cycles. Uh, we can also look at violations, and we'll look at that uh, a little later anyway. Uh, we can also look at architectural changes. So we're looking at how version 1.96 differs from version 1.9.4. So two snapshots, we're comparing them. Uh, and we can see what new classes have come in, what new violations have come in, what classes have changed, what classes no longer exist. And if you fixed any violations, what have their, their, their number would show up as well. Turns out no violations were either fixed or introduced. Uh, let's look at the number of uh, classes that no longer exist. So we can see that there used to be a field called initial size uh, in two different classes, DMUX output stream and line output stream, and those fields no longer exist. There are a bunch of methods, get next character, get next character, set begin token, set end token, which those methods no longer exist. Uh, and in fact, there are some classes uh, which no longer exist either. So just going from one build to another, you'll be able to instantly be able to see what changed from that build to the next. And based on that, you can actually, let's just bring up a new report. So we'll bring up here and say, well, what was the impact of those changes? So I can bring up an impact report, uh, which is organized by levels of import. And let's make this the same as version 1.94. And we can see that there are five, five impact report levels, which are the levels of indirection. So the left-hand side tells me what changed and the right-hand side tells me what are the things that depend on the things which are on the left-hand side. Uh, and we can see instantly, here is, the, here is from one build to another what changed, but at a deeper level, what are all the things that could be affected from that change? All right, I'll close that off. Uh, in Latix Web, you can control what reports you choose to show in the default or what report or reports that you can then bring up at any given time. Some more interesting metrics here. Here is a metric of the sizes of files. Uh, so Java doc happens to be the largest class here with a line count of 2,600 lines. And sometimes you'll see classes which are really long and would be good candidates for splitting up. 
Next, we can also look at some object-oriented metrics, and those of you who are familiar or fans of uh, Robert Martin, um, these are the metrics that he originated, so starting with atom count or class number of, these are package-oriented metrics, so, so we can see the number of classes, the number of abstract classes or interfaces, abstractness, incoming dependencies, outgoing dependencies, instability, and distance. And again, if you follow Robert Martin, then you know which ones, when the, when the distance is zero or distance is one, uh, what kind of packages, whether they are high level or low level packages, uh, gives you an indication of that. And oftentimes, those are the ones that you want to focus on uh, in terms of improving. Uh, we can also look at trends. Uh, so we can look at intercomponent cyclicality, which is a really nice metric. We're looking at it over a history of 20 different snapshots. Uh, and we're looking at it all the way from to version 1.96, starting from version 1.52. And you can see that these are the cycles that cross package boundaries. So really, one of the best metrics for object-oriented systems. Uh, and you can see how the cyclicality jumped up from version 1.54 to 1.60 uh, and then went down from 1.65 all the way down to 1.82 uh, and, uh, and so on. So you can see how the cyclicality uh, changes uh, and let's look at stability too uh, and you can see how the stability started out at 76.6% and then ended up at 70% but you can see some of the dips that took place and what's interesting as I looked at it and might be interested in looking at coupling as well and you can see how the coupling became worse before it got a little better and notice how these metrics themselves are correlated so as the intercomponent cyclicality improved you can see that the stability increased the system when you make a change less things were affected by it uh, similarly you can see how the coupling dropped on the other hand where the Intercomponent cyclicality became worse. In other words, more things were in cycles that cross package boundaries. You can see how the stability worsened and how coupling also became worse. So this is a way for you to actually look at your initiatives. You know, did a particular release make things better or worse? If you have a refactoring initiative, did it indeed lead to a reduction in the intercomponent cyclicality? Did it improve coupling? Did it make your system? more stable, you'll be able to follow that. Um, you can also look at violations. So Lattice allows you to create architectural rules. Uh, and when those rules are violated, you can actually it'll keep account of those rules. And you'll be able to see how you're doing uh, for violations. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you can look at as your projects become larger, uh, they, are they becoming more complex? Or sometimes you split up your projects into multiple parts to then reduce complexity. Um, you can also do bar graphs and so on to look at the number of uh, classes and interfaces. Um, so we looked at metrics, we looked at trends. Uh, let's now go back up and take a look at, uh, we, so we've looked at some reports and you can choose what reports you want to see. We, we've looked at several charts, we'll look at views and let's take a look at the DSM view. Um, so here is a view of uh, a really compact view of all the elements and their relationships. Uh, and since we had rules, we can also see architectural violations are flagged. And so if we wanted to see what is that particular dependency, we can actually see on the right-hand side that there is a class called symbolic link utils, which has a dependency on a class called execute. And symbolic link utils, by the way, happens to be the part of a framework which actually has a dependency on something at an application level. Uh, and that's a problem. And we can see that there are many different dependencies here uh, that actually violate the architecture. And you'll be able to see this uh, on your system as you s make it part of your continuous integration. All right, so what we looked at today was um, how Latix Web can be integrated or made part of your continuous integration system uh, so that this information is now available to your entire team right from your browser itself. Uh, you can look at as your code changes how your metrics are being affected, whether the architecture is eroding. Uh, we can look at trends, uh, and we can actually zero in on the exact dependencies which might be causing violations, uh, which, which are eroding your architecture.